What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and it is time to test Romulus. Yes, I got the new Bloodcraft champion, and I am going to be talking about skills, traits, team synergy, and I'm going to be testing him in the arena and Valley of Conquerors and against bosses. But first, download Jumpstone Legends, a mobile RPG puzzle match game. Use the link in the description to start with free stuff, including a bonus hero. All right, so Romulus is a hybrid bloodcraft champion, a mix between Thunderlords and Gulltongue, and looks like it too. And quite honestly, I'm digging the art. I just really enjoy that lightning-y look and the gold highlights and everything like that. And I don't know if anybody else does, but I kind of like it. All right, let's start by looking at the skills, and I did level them up to level 11, so they're not maxed. Just note that the numbers that we're going to be reading can go up if you level them higher. Um, and I can level them higher right now, but I kind of want to do some testing first to see if it's worth spending the books on. All right, let's look at the passive, because that's what affects the battlefield first. Normal attacks will bounce to at most two nearby enemies and deal additional damage equal to 9.1% of the target's current constitution, up to a thousand percent of the caster's strength of course that 9.1 percent number can be higher and this is incredible for a passive to be able to deal damage based on the target's current constitution means he's going to be dealing a ton of damage right off the bat when the match starts so keep that in mind another thing about this that i think i'm or i'm just not sure a lot of people think about is <laughs> it means he scales with your opponent so like, you actually don't have to put a whole lot into him at first for this skill to be good, except to maybe just get the cap up high enough um, so that you're getting the most damage potential out of that. This also means he's gonna be really good against bosses that just have oodles of constitution. All right, let's look at the active skill next. Um, generates an electric field above the selected enemy, whoever the selected enemy may be that lasts four seconds. Once per second, the electric field discharges, dealing damage equal to 221.4% of the caster's strength to enemies within range, increasing their damage taken by 12.1%. And again, that number can be higher, and that's for three seconds. But if you think about how that's going to be working, it's going to probably be hitting them potentially like multiple times. Um, this thing's going to be running hopefully a lot. So uh, hopefully the enemies within that are going to be, this is an enormous amount of extra damage to be taken, by the way. This isn't like he's dealing extra damage. It's like they are taking this extra damage from anybody, any source. The electric field immediately discharges once when generated. So right off the bat, when you get it, um, you do get that effect. That's a really, really good effect. And in fact, there's a lot of synergies, a lot of potential with that. Now let's take a look at the ultimate. Let's out a furious howl, inflicting fear to nearby enemies for two and a half seconds. Fear is not an ability we see too often. We, we see it once in a while, but it actually hasn't been on any really good champions yet. But on the champions it has been on, it's been like one of the best things they've had going on. It's kind of like another sort of taunt-like ability, um, except that the champions run away. Um, so that's really interesting. Uh, the caster's normal attacks can bounce to an unlimited number of enemy targets for six seconds. During this period, the caster's constitution recovery equals 12.1% of the damage dealt and increases his attack speed by 26%. So interestingly enough, we have a champion here who... Um, there's not just some big ultimate that you're like, you want this ultimate to go off and it's like game ending. Quite honestly, the passive, the active and the ultimate all seem really good to me. And what the ultimate does is feed into making the passive and the active work even better. Um, so there's a bunch of potential with teams and traits here. And honestly, it was kind of hard for me to settle on what traits to use, but here's what I chose to do. Um, now, first, because of the hybrids, you get Steadfast, which creates a shield based on strength. So you want strength to be high, uh, which is important, too, because of the skills we just read, which rely a lot on strength. Um, you also have uh, this Furious Thunderbolt. Each normal attack has a 70% chance to increase damage by 50%. And this effect doesn't stack. All right. 
Now, I put Agile on him because I think the passive and the active are so important. We want him to be attacking fast. Remember, his attacks, when we go to the skills on the passive, hit multiple uh, opponents. And then on the ultimate, can hit an unlimited number of opponents. Okay? So you want it to be happening fast. You really want those uh, normal attacks to be quick. Now, Impair. I'm really excited about this. I've been playing around with Impair. It's hard to find a really good champion to put this on, but I think it's going to be really good on Romulus. Increases enemies' damage taken by 8% for 4 seconds when normal attacks or skills land on them. Stacks up to 3 layers. Remember, he does multiple attacks per normal attack. It's hitting multiple opponents. Okay, now here's what I have found with Impair. Um, it's really nice when it can go on an ultimate that is hitting everybody. Ultimately, you would want the ultimate to be hitting multiple times really fast, um, like Male Water and Sun. Although that seems to be glitched right now, it may or may not be working. Some video evidence I have shows it might not be working on Male Water and Sun. So, you want to put it on a hero like this. Why? Because the attacks happen first, they happen right away, they're hitting multiple opponents. Um, it's going to be really good on champions like this, where right off the bat, this effect is happening. And then when he ultimates, now it's happening to everybody. When everybody gets the stack, it can be up to 24% extra damage. All right, that's, that's a lot of extra damage that each individual opponent is going to take on. They're not just taking it on from him. They're taking it on from your whole team. So you want to build the team around that. And remember, that's on top of his ultimate, which is also causing them to take on more damage. Um, so he has the potential to not only deal a lot of damage himself, but to make the rest of your team deal more damage. So the only regular trait that I have on him is brutal, because you want that strength to be as high as you can possibly get it. Um, okay, let's just dive into the arena and play around with different teams, because... I feel like you can build around him in different ways. I'm going to start out by putting Romulus into one of my absolute favorite team synergies in this game. That is a female Tide Razor build where I have multiple champions that have this like zone of effect, usually a zone of damage or something like that or something happening within the zone. So I want to pull all my opponents into that zone. Now, interestingly enough, what we were reading on Romulus is the ability... Um, some of the attacks, they, they hit nor, uh, nearby enemies and the same thing with that cloud that hangs over. So I really want everybody bunched up here. Um, now my opponent here has more power than I do. They have a male water and sun and I don't. Um, these are not my most powerful heroes in the game. It's just a really fun synergy. We're going to see if this works at all. This will be a really good test. Okay, let's, uh, let's watch this. I want to turn off the 2x because I want to see what's actually happening. Okay, so we're getting the heroes bunched like I wanted to, which is great. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, now we got the big damage dealing effects going. Let's see if we can keep it up. Wow. Oh, now their male water and sun is going to it. Oh, oh but I think we're going to get him. <laughs> oh man. Look at this. Let's just see if we can take out that last opponent here. Oh, man, we were supposed to be out, Master. Let's see uh, what the damage looks like. All right, so Romulus actually comes in second. Um, it was my male Alma who did by far the most damage, and that's what he's kind of known for in this. But Romulus really, really... Uh, uh, did a lot of great work in this more than my male hoe, which I think is interesting and I don't have a ton of vigor on my Romulus yet um, But that was a really nice synergy next We're going up against another male water and sun team and this one's a little more meta because they have Phoenix They have female hoe they have female lion stone um, And it does look like they have a male soul keeper back there, too. So this is gonna be a tough one um, I'm not gonna have the healing of a male water and sun on my side. So like this is going to come down to trying to deal more damage faster. And I'm getting out to a quick lead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we 
We just sliced through them. I did not expect that. Who did the work this time? Look at Romulus! <laughs> Male Almet for a long time has been my superstar in this kind of build where female tide raisers um, pulling all the opponents into his effect and male hose here with the same kind of deal going on. But to see Romulus doing that kind of damage in this build is incredible. Now I'm going to up the ante a little bit. So I have a team here that's a little bit more powerful than the last one. As far as it's a little more highly vigored, it's a little bit more meta, although with some tweaks. Um, and so now you can see I have a male water and sun. This is not my big male water and sun. This is my little male water and sun. So actually it's kind of questionable whether he's even all that good with, um, the lower vigor, vigor level that he has. Um, but he's in here to see how Romulus can play on a more meta team. I've obviously also got Phoenix over here, but I also have a male Akuna and I've got Zeistin. I'm hoping Zeistin is going to distract and draw everybody over while Romulus right off the bat is going to be dealing a lot of damage and applying both the trait and his skill effect that's going to be um, allowing the opponents to take more damage too so that the male water and sun phoenix and malakuna can basically finish them off malakuna is also helping with some control effects so let's see how this goes all right so romulus right off the bat so he's going after the same uh guys as zeist in there oh my gosh look at all the control effects that are just happening all at once and we're doing a fantastic amount of damage right off the bat. We just need to try and race their male water and sun. And he's going off on the other side. Just can we be more powerful than him? We took him out. We took him out. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Who's the winner? Winner. Oh my gosh. Look at that damage that Romulus did. He's basically tied with my male Akuna for the most damage. Notice my male water and sun didn't actually do all that much damage. Um, he acts more like a healer in these types of builds here, but man, that was a really good mix of synergies right there. It's just even damage across the board. Sometimes if you have one big damage dealer, the opponent can deal with them, but not when you got three that can do damage like this and male water and sun's not even in the top three. <laughs> Now, I just want to see how much Romulus can punch up. So I'm going to take on a team where these two teams have absolutely no business being in the same ring together. They have almost 45 million more power than my team, but I want to see how long they can last. I want to see how much damage Romulus can do. And if my team wins, I would be absolutely shocked. At the same time, my team has pretty good synergy. You can see that right off the bat, we do tons of damage. The thing is being able to finish it off when we get ahead like this, when their male water and sun goes off, can we survive? And he's, he's doing his, his business now. My male water and sun's already gone, so now I'm losing health. And as I thought, I wasn't gonna win this one. But I'll tell you what, the team did better than I thought it was going to do, and Romulus was the shining star here. Look, outgunned, male water and sun, male Akuna, and even Phoenix, which is quite incredible. All right, I'm going to take on the same opponent now, but this time I'm going to try it with my main comp. And Romulus in this build has about 60 to 70 less vigor than everybody else. So it's going to be interesting, but um, we'll see if the outcome is going to be any different and just how he complements my main comp here. Now, it doesn't help that he's been taunted and stunned this whole time. We got out to the lead like we did last time. But let's see if my male water and sun can at least keep the team alive to do what it's trying to do. And, and it looks like we're going to be able to. We did it. <laughs> we did it. And let's, oh my gosh. <laughs> I told you Romulus can hang with anybody because that passive scales. It scales no matter who the opponent is. Which I guess is bad against weaker opponents because he's going to do less damage because their constitution is lower. But against these giant opponents, he does a ton of damage. He's right up there with male water and sun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible considering how uh, he is not vigored like the rest of the team. Lastly, in the arena, I am going to take on a familiar opponent. This is Fierce Daughter, and if you've watched my videos before, you know that I am very evenly matched with her. Do not be fooled by her power being lower. She does 
uh, skills correctly. She does team synergies correctly. She does vigor correctly. So her teams always punch up. Let's see if I can hang with her. And if so, if Romulus is going to have an effect on the battlefield here. You can see how much damage, like, she she and I are doing in our male water and sons. Just kind of going back and forth here. <laughs> My whole team's, like, keeping their distance from there. But we got there. We got there. Um, and this time, Romulus wasn't particularly the star of this one. And I think it just has to do with he wasn't in the mix. He wasn't in the middle of everybody, which when you saw... The battlefield getting clogged he was having more of a, an effect with the attacks hitting multiple people in the, the the cloud that's shooting lightning um hitting more and stuff like that so uh this time it was male corbett and male silken crown who uh did the most damage but still romulus more than male water and sun and this is my big male water and sun uh well it looks like i forgot to sign up for valley of conquerors doink well anyway We've seen how Romulus is doing in PvP, and it is obvious that he's good. Not only because he does a lot of damage himself, but there's a lot of hidden damage there in PvP as well. Because of the trait that I put on him, Impair, which is causing opponents to take more damage from everybody else. But also his skill does the same thing. So since we don't get to see any Valley of Conquerors, let's just try him out on some bosses now. Let's see how he does uh, against the expedition boss here and he's not on my strongest team but that's just because I think I'm going to kill the boss super quick here uh, and I do want there to be some time so we can see what's going on here exactly and really I want to compare him to like strength types of heroes on my team um, just to see how he matches up here and this is what we get um, yeah look at that damage wow second behind only male cigaric who who is just a boss all-star um and this male water and sun just a heads up is my backup male water and sun i have a super strong one and then i've got this one that just barely has any vigor but wow look at that showing that's great against the bosses now this one should go even faster because i am trying him out on uh, my team that's a little bit bigger as far as vigor goes Still not the biggest one, but I want to see how he scales potentially with uh, this opponent. And I did turn off the 2x just to make it last a little bit longer. <laughs> so we can actually see what's going on here. Um, but yeah, so uh, again, Romulus near the top there. Uh, Phoenix was the, the top scorer this time, but Romulus right there. Now let's see how he does against a raid boss. And... I've paired him with three raid boss all-stars. Um, you know, female Trevane and male Sigaric are just amazing in PvE. So we're going to see how he stacks up in his passive, uh, which allows him to do more damage uh, the higher the constitution of the opponent. It could possibly put him up there with female Tre Trevane and male Sigaric, but we'll just have to see here. Um, it does look like we are shrinking that constitution bar there at the top the hp uh is going down quite a bit there but i kind of want to watch um what romulus is doing here remember we've got that effect too where um he is uh both through his trait and through his skill is allowing damage more damage to be dealt uh to the raid boss that's from everybody not just him but he is causing that so keep that in mind there's a lot of hidden damage here that looks like it's attributed to other heroes when actually it's him that's allowing that to happen. But I'm really curious to see how he stacks up. We do have um, two strength boosters here too. Uh, that's female Lionstone uh, and female Selfos. Um, uh, just boosting the amount of damage that uh, these particular heroes can do, these PvE all-stars. Um, so uh, we got about uh, 15 seconds or so coming up here. We'll be able to check the damage on this one. But I gotta say, um, overall, I'm just really impressed with him uh, up to this point. And I wish I could have shown you Valley of Conquerors. Uh, I guess I'll just have to sign up for that next week <laughs> and try again. Um, but against Raid Boss, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, he's right up there 
with male Cigaric and female Trevain. Um, not quite as uh, powerful as them as far as the damage dealt. Um, but man, he is one of the PvE all-stars now. Uh, so unlike female Trevain, um, he's great in PvP and PvE. I have to say, I'm really impressed with him. And I think that... Um, just going to grab my loot there. I think he's a player. I think we're going to see a lot of him. Because he can be used everywhere. He's very flexible. He can be used in different team setups, as you saw. I was playing around with different types of synergies. And he was kind of foundations to different strategies. Uh, so he's awesome. I'm excited to keep playing with him. I hope that you are able to get him and play with him too because I had a lot of fun with him. And if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. And I... We'll catch you in the next one.